Probably another year, another hopefully championship year for the uh, Vancouver Canadians. Uh, big changes, but the teams are back. So today, media day for us. Yeah, you know what's fun is you get to see some familiar faces. I mean, there are some new ones here, but the thing that I like is when you have guys that were here last year that won a championship, and they spread the message forward to this year's crop. So to me, it's kind of passing the torch forward, and I don't want to be greedy, but I'd love to have our fifth championship in eight years. Yeah, no kidding. I don't think you're alone on that one. I know the fans would love that too. But we're talking interesting, uh, talking to the general manager. He said uh, he's never been here before, but he's very familiar, loves it here. And he said, uh, you know, he said he's heard nothing but good things about Vancouver. Kind of an interesting guy, just very militant, very structured. And I think that's what you need at the lower levels of minor league baseball. I mean, we talk about managing players and managing a, a player in 2018, how they're like their own little corporation. But the thing that I've really come to appreciate about Dallas and McPherson is just structured, very determined to make sure that we get there five minutes ahead. And hopefully we play that kind of baseball where we get ahead early and then just continue to build on it. So hopefully what he does off the field translates on the field. Well, he said he's heard nothing but positive things about Vancouver and he does want to bring a you know winning championship to Canadian boys in the team right now yeah you know <laughs> we always think of the hockey connotation <laughs> and both of these guys probably could play hockey as well uh you look at Kier Weir and you look at of course uh you know all of the Canadian players that we have we have Braden Boucher coming who also could probably be a second line winger if you will so between him Owen Spiewak and Kier Weir I think we're going to be in really great shape and, and uh, guys that are familiar with these parts yeah very familiar with the parts right now now you've made a few changes and we'll talk to Ross about it later on so a few changes to the stadium here thing that I like about it is a couple of years ago we had to look in the mirror and say what are we going to do to better our field because the field was the one thing we had the crowds we had the winning team but we had a field that was subpar and I think we all knew it and we just kind of turned away and hoped that it would get better on its own but it didn't so we made a change we brought in Ross Barron who has been fantastic he wins field turf manager of the year last year which is something nobody in our Canadians organization had ever done before so not I don't know if we want to call it the sophomore jinx but I mean he's definitely got big shoes to fill and uh, if there's anybody that can do it I, and what I see behind us, uh, he's the guy to do it. Yeah, and it's ironic that uh, Washington just wins the Stanley Cup and Ross was in Washington uh, for the Major League Baseball team. Yeah, he lets us know all the time that he worked with the Nationals. But you know what? I think even just putting yourself in those situations, and you know that speaks to anything that you do in life. Sometimes you've just got to put yourself in situations that maybe you uh, uh, are matched with people that are better than you because you're just going to soak up that information. And everything that he learned in Washington and Nationals Park, he's brought here to Nat Bailey, and we're definitely better for it. Let's go behind the scenes. The crew up in the broadcast booth still the same? I think so. I don't think I've been fired yet. No, so. <laughs> but you, you got you got some great volunteers up there that help you out oh, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Jordy and Charlene are fantastic. They're both back for their second year. We have the exact same staff that we had last year, oh. which in minor league baseball is almost an anomaly on its own. So um, I think it's because the food is good. That's what I've heard. They, we, we pay them in three-foot hot dogs. It's, so Yeah, it's a three-foot hot dog that does yeah. it right there. You know, that, that's <laughs> when the it was right one, there. I was a little nervous, but three were in good standing. You went down to training camp earlier on. You got the luxury of calling one of the games. That's got to be a nice feeling for you. Yeah, you know, there was a moment there. Uh, I got to do five games in a row and I first of all I'll tell you the negative I've never done a minor league baseball or a major slash minor league baseball game before because in the third inning there's wholesale changes the home team trades all nine of their players the road team trades all nine of their players my scorecard looked like I was Tyler Henry doing a reading for somebody I had no idea what I was doing but the beauty of it is every once in a while you'll say okay Joe Maurer stepping into the box or uh, you know Chase Utley and you sit there and you say to yourself wow these are major league stars that you're getting to announce and you know for me I get the future stars I've never had a current star so for me that was really cool did you have a chance to sit down and talk to one of the uh, current stars yeah you know uh, and again the luxury of being in Vancouver is you'll see Marcus Stroman or Aaron Sanchez yeah. or Kevin Pillar and you know Kevin Pillar was a guy that I sat down and talked with because he looked leaner and he's already only got like two or three percent body fat but he looked even better and I said what did you do and he said that it was all diet that he didn't change anything to do with his workout he just ate better so I was like, you know what, I think I'll look into that. And he immediately went and got like a hot fudge sundae. But I mean, no, he was, uh, he was definitely a, a pillar, uh, a pillar of success. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, I guess we would have to say that you had a very successful off season with the uh, TSN. I think so. Yeah, you know, what's funny is they had this throwaway slot, and I say that generously because yeah. nobody thinks 10 to midnight's the good get. You want to be the morning show guy or the afternoon show guy, but we got to the point where we'd start looking at the phone boards, and they were lit before we walked into the studio. And so we thought that it was from the show before, but they were like, no, they're waiting for you to start. So that's when we kind of looked at each other, and we thought, oh my God, there might be something here. you got to remember, Dan Russell did this for yeah. 25 years yeah. at the, in that exact time slot. So there is a late night market there. So uh, I meet with TSN actually this week to talk about what the future holds because I think even they were surprised that there was that much uh, interest in something that late at night. It'd be fair to ask if you were approached at all by uh, Sportsnet? I was but 
We'll leave it at that. Okay, we'll just really should leave it at that. Okay, we'll leave but, it know, at that. I was appro- I get approached by a lot of people, but you got to be able to close the deal. I can't seem to be able to do that. So, uh, all in due time. Well, yeah, I'm just waiting for you to go from this level up to the major league level and be calling a game uh, Blue Jays game back in Toronto. I'll tell you this, and I say this like complete honesty. Uh, those were the five most unenjoyable games I've ever done in my life because it was so different and so structured and so procedural um, that it really wasn't me. So I came back to Vancouver and everybody thought that I had egg on my face because, oh, you didn't get the job, you didn't get the job. And I sat here and I'm like, look what I get to come back to. So a lot of people think that that's song and dance, but the reality is is I kind of like being in Vancouver. And if, if, if somebody told me that this is where I got to do my baseball for the next 20, 30 years, I'm okay with that. Uh, you can't argue with that at all. Yeah. Not at all. Not bad for an Ontario boy. No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> By, <laughs> that, that's a cheap shot there. Too. I, 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 that's okay. Your, your hockey team's not good either, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. You're, you're right. Okay. Thanks, Robbie. We'll talk to you later. Anytime. On. Okay, thanks.